Hey, Stephen, how you doing? Thank you so much for submitting your work. I see that you've got, this is a pretty, pretty detailed work right over here describing your intent and your methodology. And also we've got the discussion board for this week where you did a really great job describing your design choices. So fantastic job there. It's really important. I mean, one of the things I'm really emphasizing in this assignment is um, that designers need to have a reason for everything, every mark on the page, every placement, every alignment should have a reason for being there. And that's really specifically relevant to students. And if you've looked at some of the other videos in, in this thread, you'll hear me mention this a lot. The reason this is so important, especially for student designers is because you're gonna be asked to um, validate your decisions you're, it, it, towards the end of your student career. When you come to portfolio review, you're gonna get bombarded with questions and that's not even half of it. You're gonna really get bombarded with questions when you start the interview process. And I, I use this story a lot, but whenever I interview an intern or a, a um, prospective uh, designer for, for my firm, I. I mean, I give quite, I mean, I just drill the the applicant um, with questions. And if I don't get answers to every question, honestly, Stephen, I move on to the next candidate. And there, and I ask, give the reasoning for your alignment. Tell me about why you use. What is this? The significance of this typeface. And if the designer says, well, I just, you know, I, I just thought it looked kind of cool in the composition. No, that's not the answer we're looking for. You have to have a reason for your, and that I'm really trying to drill that home here um, this week. And, and I want you guys to take that and move forward and move through your student career and, and subsequently to your design career and keep that in mind. Everything should have a reason and you should be able to um, uh, describe in detail the, the reasoning for all of that. And you've done a great job in your writing. So what I want to do is I want to go into your work and, and we'll take a look at some things and some considerations. So I've got your work up right here and everything makes great sense. Now, you know how I feel about center alignment, right? Center alignment does nothing to activate the negative space in any composition. We know that and I'm really adamant about that. I, I you know, center alignment, it, 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 it relegates the, um, negative space to leftover space. So there's no real careful uh, calculated um, um, reasoning for alignment or placement in center alignment. It's just center aligned and everything around it is symmetrical and that's what we're stuck with, right? So there's definitely better ways of activating negative space than center alignment. However, your concept is to uh, represent via visual correspondence the idea of center stage. Therefore, this makes sense. Um, the fabric for the red curtain, that makes sense too. So really great job so far de de describing your, your intent. Now, one of the things I, I think is a little problematic is this is, his signature is a little bit difficult to read. And, and I think that could quite feasibly be, be, be problematic. So I've got a couple of ideas. And, and I also, I, I've got some ideas I think that, that are, gonna, are gonna work very well. Now, another problem I'm looking at, and again, as a professional designer, it's all about foresight. So when I place something, I think about the placement. How is this gonna work out down the line? You know, is, is this gonna be transposed into a web banner one day? And if so, how does this alignment gonna work? And then, and et cetera, et cetera. Really think forward all the time, all the time you're designing. And the reason I say that is because this is a two-sided um, piece, right? It's a front and a back. So we're thinking about how, now I remember from your sketches that this was gonna go ahead and, and continue onto the back of the poster. And I think, I believe you even were gonna try to create your timeline out of that. So you have this, this stroke of, of the signature that moves onto the back of the poster and starts to begin the timeline, right? Now the problem with placement here is that that timeline following this formula is gonna be dead center on the back of the composition. And that's problematic because that's gonna end up slicing your composition into two parts, theoretically, right? So I follow me on this. Um, so I, I'm not real sure about the placement here. I think we can tackle both of those issues with just a couple of, of, of minor adjustments to the, um, to the composition. So my recommendation would be this. Let me, let me, I've, I've thought about this, really thought about this. And I think what we can do is this. I, I, would, I would recommend moving the... Yeah, I know you want center stage, but right now, let's get this grounded a little bit. Okay, so let's move this down. 
in the composition. All right. Now, what we can do is this. We can take this typeset right here and we can go ahead and, and, and use that. Now, I know that the instructions say that the front of the cover needs to have um, the um, laureate's name as well as a tagline. It doesn't say, though, that it has to follow that hierarchy. So theoretically, we could make the focal point the tagline here, the, the quote, and then we can place the laureate's name under the quote. Then we can place his signature under that. And the, 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 uh, by the time the viewer gets to the signature, they're going to know that says George Bernard Shaw or G. Bernard Shaw, right? So let's do this. I want you to take a look at this. And I just happened upon this, and I think it's a really interesting um, configuration. I think, let me show you what I'm talking about, this right here. So instead of doing the whole first sentence that the, the, the word yourself is dropped to the second line, life is about creating yourself. So the cadence goes like this. Life isn't about, what the heck just happened? Okay, so life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself with a little emphasis on creating yourself. And in the cadence of this and in the idea, that is, is, is the, the, fo the focal point of the statement. Okay, that's where the emphasis should be is creating yourself. That's what he's saying. Okay, life is about this, life is about this, life is about creating yourself. Okay, so putting that on the line itself, I think is a really interesting solution. I'm thinking about taking that kind of configuration right there. Oh, by the way, I would use a sans serif here. I, I think this just looks too formal. So anyways, I would say, so we take this sans serif and we, we use this, follow this so that creating yourself is on the line itself, the last line, okay? So we take that quote and we place it right up here, okay? And, and it can be pretty large. I mean, it's, it's a pretty powerful quote, so it can be pretty large. Follow the center alignment, right? But when you place his name underneath the center alignment, I would left align it. I'm sorry, why does that keep happening? I would right align it with the, the um, not the period, but the, the F. Let me see, how do we want to align that? Hmm. Yeah, work on that alignment. Maybe since the, the W is on a diagonal, you could probably exceed the F and maybe kind of take that serif and align it with the period. That way it, it, will, it won't look like it's, it won't create any optical illusions, making it look push too far right, push too far left. Try it. Let's see what, what happens there. I think that George Bernard Shaw here is a little bit large in relationship to the subhead. So think about removing, I mean, uh, bringing that size down a little bit. So again, this configuration. So, and then George Bernard Shaw right there. And that's placed right here okay so by the time the viewer reads that they're going to know who the, the the laureate is then you can take this and bring it down a little reduce the size maybe a little bit and bring it down so that when you do continue that line onto the back of the poster it's not in such a cumbersome area that's going to create real nightmares when it comes to uh, laying out the back since that line will theoretically go right through the middle of the back of the poster. I, mean, I hope I'm making sense. Let me know if I'm not and I'll clarify. But I think that, that those could be some feasible solutions. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, Stephen, do this and do this and do this. I'm not trying to take over your project. I'm not trying to art direct your project. I'm trying to get you to think about these things. If these things make sense, try it. Start experimenting. See what you come up with, okay? Um, I, the biggest problem, I think, is is the fact that th we don't know what that. That's really most like most signatures. You should see my signature. There's there ain't no way you're gonna figure out my name looking at my signature. So I think most signatures fall in that in that line. So uh, it's, it's always a good idea to back up the signature with the name somewhere. And I think that's the, a really feasible solution. So let me know what you think. Try it. Um, if you want to try it and resubmit, let's take a look at it. But as I said, I think everything else is making really good sense. So great start so far. Um, if you have any questions at all, or if I can provide any clarification, please let me know. I'll be glad to do so. Okay, great start, Stephen. Thank you so much.